So why are you still using Make and you haven't switched over to any end? The answer is not so simple. So in this video, I'm not necessarily gonna talk about the pros and cons. Let's just talk about what works for you. Taking a look at Make and what Make can do, Make.com is still one of the best, if not, in my opinion, the best automation tool you can be using right now. The drive for NAN with the agentic workflows and self-hosting is really blowing up. It's very trendy. It's definitely happening right now. People are jumping on the N8 Endgame because of those two major points. One, that it can be self-hosted, and two, is that it's really focusing right now on these agentic workflows. Having an AI agent that can take control of different tools and actually somewhat autonomously make decisions and run different aspects of your automation for you. Now, if that is something that you want in your workflows, in your automation, you don't necessarily need to make the jump, need to move all of your automations, all of your workflows over to N8N. You don't necessarily need to learn N8N fully just to get these agent workflows and have this agentic capability in your automations. Yes, it's nice. It's great. It's been super fun for me learning N8N, using N8N and mastering N8N and using these AI agents. And that's a big point in favor, probably the biggest point in favor of N8N, aside from, of course, that you can host it locally. So those are the two main things that N8N has going for it. Looking back at Make, if you're already using Make, you know what it has going for it. You know what Make can do. You're doing it already for your business. First and foremost, it's gonna be the most user-friendly automation tool out there, in my opinion. Make has tons of integrations that N8N doesn't have the functionality for or the capability. So there's a huge lack of integrations now it's just, it's popular right now, it's super shiny. And so that's something that gets talked about, or I should say not talked about enough in our AI automation space. Shiny object syndrome, right? It's very easy to move on to the next new thing. Everything that we're facing in this entire niche is moving so fast. And if you're inside of the space, it's already your intrinsic innate capability and focus to keep up with the latest things. That's what we have to do to stay relevant in the AI automation space, especially with all the new advancements in AI in general, we have to move on to the next thing super quickly. Otherwise, we're going to get left behind, right? That's the whole mentality we need to take. And so I think that's one of the biggest things happening right now with Make and N8N is, okay, N8N is actually older relatively than Make. Make.com didn't really become Make.com until roughly 2022, I believe. Don't quote me on this. I don't have the accurate dates. I could pull them up, but N8N was around, I think it came out in 2019, something like that. Again, don't quote me, I could look it up, but these aren't new tools, right? And so when Make came out, it destroyed Zapier a little bit, same thing going on, just a few more capabilities here and there. And then after over time, after a bit, Make started getting all these other capabilities that Zapier can't do. Zapier still to this day has more integrations and more features in that regard than Make does. And so N8N, coming in and sweeping away with the next new shiny thing and the agents and self-hosting and stuff like that, we're still not seeing the capability in N8N that Make has currently. So I think that's a huge part of it, shiny object syndrome. And the best advice I've been talking to members of my school group, everybody that's asking me these questions, should I switch? Should I switch? If you're using Make, and it works and there's nothing wrong with it and there's no problems and you're not telling yourself or asking yourself, oh, I wish make Dot com could do this, could do blank, there's absolutely no need to move on to N8N and have to learn a whole new system and move all your automations. There's absolutely no need for that at all, okay? If you're using Make and it works, definitely keep using Make. Make is not going anywhere. There's some new stuff coming down the pipeline. I could pull up all the features and stuff coming down, but a lot of us YouTubers are talking about this kind of stuff. We have Stephen Pope, He's a big one. Jack Roberts, he's a big one. We got Zubir, we got Nate Herc, but you guys, we're all kind of splitting off and doing our own thing, just like these automation tools are splitting off and doing our 
their own thing. We have so many people talking about this stuff and figuring out what's best and what's right and what's going on. Everybody's saying all of this different stuff and trying to come up with the best YouTube videos for everyone, right? If you're feeling lost and feeling overwhelmed with everything coming out and what should I learn and what should I do, only follow something that feels right. It's too new in the space to really say this is better than this. And a lot of situations online, you're going to find people saying this is better than this, right? But it comes down to what you're doing and how you're doing it. Just take, for example, the differences between, say, OpenAI and ChatGPT and Anthropic Claude, right? People can say, oh, Claude is better than OpenAI in this way, and OpenAI is better than Claude in this way. But earlier on, two language models splitting off doing the same thing, it just came down to preference. Over time is when we see specialization. Over time is when we're gonna be able to say, you know what, any N is better at this. If you're doing this, choose any N. And make.com is better at this. If you're doing this, choose make.com, right? It's gonna take some time for different applications and these apps and the user base itself, the people making workflows in make.com and people making workflows in any N are us we are the ones really shaping and deciding what these tools are going to become and specialize in. And so if you're using a particular tool, if you're using make.com, it works. You're happy with it. Make.com is coming out with agents, the make grid. It's not going anywhere. It's getting better and better. If you're using N8N hosting locally, already we're seeing that kind of specialization there. And then obviously N8N is going to be your choice. For me as a YouTuber, I'm definitely having fun with N8N just because because it is new and it's super fun to work with and it is trendy and it, you know people are asking for it on YouTube so it's been fun to make videos about it but as soon as this shiny object syndrome dies down I'm definitely going to be building more automation workflows and scenarios in make and Airtable which is another tool I use a lot and most likely I'll be building stuff in the next new shiny thing that comes out too right so as an individual or especially as a business owner facing these questions what should I do everything is so new I've got to run my business? What is the best tool to run my business? If you're using one already, there is no reason to switch to another tool. Specifically, if you're using make.com, there's absolutely no reason to switch to any end. It's too early to tell which one is better. If you have a specific use case in mind that you find make.com just cannot do, then it's now the time to start asking yourself these questions. Should I switch to a different tool? So that's my advice. That's my tips. There's a lot of us talking about this stuff. So I'm sure you can find plenty of videos on YouTube about this sort of thing. I just wanted to chime in, add my piece to the conversation. Of course, I'm building a bunch of cool automations and workflows in NAN. You can check out on my YouTube channel. I have a bunch of resources in my school community. If you want to check out my school community, I am teaching NAN workflows, practical workflows, agents, and of course, building really cool content related automations in make.com and scaling up to full functioning CMS tools that can post to all your social media and things like that. We're still working on that stuff over in the school group. Go ahead, check the links below. Hope to see you in the group and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.